Hi guys, it's so good to see you back in another episode recap of Low School. The episode stars Fit Sole and her sister Kang Buol trying to get Sole's work sold. Junhei is also in the shop and perks up when the news reports of Prosecutor Sole's trial. He grabs the remote and increases the volume, but the argument of Sole and the shop owner is still too loud. Since her demand is too high, the owner asks her if she managed to get into the Low School with those books. Sole lies that she did. Junhee, who is desperate to watch the news, offers to buy the books on her price and says to her that he too plans to enter the law school. He also adds that even though he doesn't need the books, he'll buy them since she seems like she needed the money. At the bus stop, Sole is excited for finally having a six-figure in her bank account. But Beol is disappointed since she made the money by fraud and encourages her to get into the law school. So Sole says to her that the law school is not for everyone. Junhee is dropped the conversation by signaling Beol to stay quiet. When she asks Sole if she feels sorry for lying for Junhee, Sole says she is not since he said he'd get in without the books. Junhee slams the book pile on the bench and asks her how much he should pay her to feel the shame. So Beol returns the money and grabs the book pile before getting onto the bus, but she leaves behind a book. Back in present time, Junhoon and the other suspects take part in the spot inspection. Junho explains that when prosecutors so passed out, he forced him to drink coffee mixed with sugar. The police and the prosecutors are surprised to hear this new piece of evidence, and Professor Kim says to them that he never testified until now. Junho adds that the sugar packet was not there in the crime site. He then rushes to pick the broken glass piece. Junho slowly approaches Junhee and asks him if he was the murderer. We then flash back to the day of the incident, and Junho gets an email from prosecutor So with the hit and run footage. He makes a call to Prosecutor So, who asks him to call him back. Before he hangs up, he overhears him saying that Junhee knows the truth and Junhoo will also find it out soon. Junhoo then goes to inspect the crime site and meets with the shop owner to whom the CCTV footage belonged. She confessed that Junhee came by and took the footage. At present, Junhoo asks him if he is the one who sent the footage and Junhee admits to it, saying he was the prosecutor in charge of the case. When he walks out, he runs into his heart. She asks him if he's the one who killed him since Junhoon signaled him out. She again placed the document before Junhee, demanding him to sign it. She argues that he had a good reason to kill him since he will be inheriting a fortune after his death. Junhee reminds her that she is in no position to say that to him since she used her children to stay in the US and even took another love. Meanwhile, in the SWAT inspection, the chief prosecutor argues that they can't prove the broken nose pad belongs to prosecutor So. Junhoo then demands for a second autopsy. When the detective comes with a photo of Prosecutor So's glasses, Junhoo points out the glasses were switched and Professor Kim confirms it. Junhoo also brings out that the current autopsy doesn't have any photo evidence. The chief prosecutor still refuses to do the second autopsy since not only Junhoo's evidence is weak but also will have to take out the prosecutor's body from the ground and his family would never agree to it. The prosecutor's wife walk in from behind and tells them to proceed with the second autopsy because she needs to know who the culprit is. The rest of the students get the news of Junho requesting of a second autopsy and him suspecting Junhee. When he walks out from the spot inspection, again the reporters gather around him. Sole finds it uncomfortable and shouts from behind asking if Junho asked for a second autopsy. So all the reporters starts to question if there was a problem in the first investigation. Professor Kim tries to convince the vice dean to make her as Junho's primary defendant. But the vice dean opposes it, saying an academic can't practice law and even if she can, people will suspect that they are trying to protect their own. He points out that she wants to defend him because they were close, but she says to him that she would do the same for him if he was falsely accused. The vice dean then tells her to give up since they have already decided to dismiss him once he gets indicted. Juni watches the banner calling in for a witness for the hit and run case gets taken down. He then flashed back to the confrontation with prosecutor So after finding out the evidence of the case. Manho sits next to him and brags about how he managed to shake a powerful person like prosecutor So, earning him a punch on the face from Junhee. As he leaves, Manho tells him that his uncle always kept the spare glasses in the car, but on the day he died, that pair disappeared. He taps on Junhee's shoulder and tells him to find out if it is on the list of evidence or his articles. Jiho, on the other hand, looks under Junhee's mattress and finds the broken glass of Prosecutor So. Meanwhile, Prosecutor So's wife goes to see Junhoo. She confesses that she finds Junhee more suspicious than Junhoon since he'd inherit a large amount of money once Prosecutor So is dead. As she walks out, Sole overhears she talking on the phone about a medical officer. 
because Junhoon already had a visitor, Sole and Jiho doesn't get the permission to visit him. They run into his attorney outside, so they convince him to introduce them as their interns and get in. When Sole worries about having to find the real culprit to get Junhoon to clear his name, Junhoon and Jiho corrects her that all they got to do is to discredit prosecution evidence. If the second autopsy changes the cause of death, then it will discredit the evidence. Jiho has worn prosecutor source missing glasses and hands it to Junhoon. Junhee, on the other hand, notes the missing glasses tucked under his mattress. The attorney has made the police go through all the phone records of 911 relevant to the day of the incident. And in it, they have found a phone record of Junhee informing the prosecutor fell down the stairs. Sole has looked into whereabouts of Moin Ho on the day and the police has confirmed that he was away from the crime site during the murder. Junhee gets summoned to the prosecutor's office to testify. When the chief prosecutor questioned him if he killed the prosecutor so, Junhi goes on about how going for a second autopsy will humiliate the police and the prosecutors. He then leaves saying he has a class to get to. When Junhi leaves, he overhears the prosecutor and the detectives fuming over Junhi toying with them and gets determined to do the second autopsy. As he leaves, he runs into Junhu and the two share a look. Back in the law school, the detective opens up Junhu's locker and searches through it. Outside the lecture hall, a teaching assistant collects all the laptops of the students since Professor Kang has ordered everyone to leave the laptops behind. As Sonje hurries to the class, the two detectives arrive and ask for the class of Professor Kang. Sonje quickly slips his laptop to the rack before the detectives could note and leaves. Also, the results are out and almost everyone got poor grades, especially Sole and Ye Sot. Sonje has scored the highest and the professor even lets him off from being late since he has done well in the exam. In the prosecutor office, chief prosecutor is not so respectable towards Jun Hoon as he was last time. He is more determined to extend his stay in the prison, pointing out that there is a little chance for the things to change in the second autopsy. And even if it does, he can still charge him with destroying evidence since his laptop is missing. So Jun Hoon claims that the laptop is stolen, changing his previous argument of losing it. He also adds that the missing sugar packet and the laptop might have a link. After Professor Kang's class, the police come in and ask for the students' cooperation to answer some questions on Han Jun Hee. But the students go out of the class asking them to summon them to the police station if they want to question them. We all find a letter informing them of Man Ho living in the neighborhood. Apparently, he lives in the house across theirs. While Jun Hoon is in the shower, another inmate stabs him. It seems Jun Hoon has worked on his case and got him arrested. He tells him that he looked forward to the date he get to kill him and is so pleased he ended up in the same prison with him. Before he could kill him, another inmate called for the guard. Junhee finds his locker door filled with hate and notes. Professor Kim finds him standing in front of the locker and tells him to make use of her if he sees fit. She gets a call from the police informing about Junhoon getting stabbed. She, Junhee and Son Jae goes to see him in the hospital. Sole's mother leaves Byol along in the house advising her to lock up the door. Once she is gone, Manho looks at her through the window as she makes a call to Sole informing about the notice of Manho. At the hospital, the doctor tells them that Junhoon has lost a lot of blood and needs an immediate blood transfusion. Since he has a rare blood type, if they don't find a donor suit, he might end up dead. Meanwhile, the police carry out the second autopsy on prosecutor So. The notice of the need of blood gets spread and even Manho gets a text. Apparently, he has the rare blood type and makes a call to Junhee asking if he should donate since he could benefit if Junhoon is dead. After a moment, Junhee tells him not to donate the blood, and the episode ends as Junhoon's heartbeat line goes flat. The evidence against Junhee gets tied up, and Manho seems to have played a huge side role in killing the prosecutor. At some point, it seems as Junhee and Junhoon are working together, and then again, it seems as they are trying to frame the other. Only Sole and Professor Kim shows a genuine concern about the case. We'll have to see in the next episode how the mystery gets untangled. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you again in another.